welcome to the Espas Trico podcast, the first episode of 2022 and the 40th episode overall feels like somewhat of a landmark. Absolutely. Uh, I'm Stephanie. I'm Naomi. And we are the new-ish co-owners of Espas Trico. We are in our fourth month and our first new year together. Yeah, it it feels like, I mean, I feel like we've, we've said this since maybe about the second week in, but it's it's starting to settle in and it keeps settling in yeah as we go along i think yeah. it's um we as you may know if you uh follow our instagram or if you're a local customer we've had some ups and downs with the the uh changing regulations and closures lately here in montreal and so that's left us all in a bit of a sort of discombobulated start to the year but we're back seeing all your friendly faces in store now and it's so great to still be able to connect with all of you online as well so we're just happy to be back in front of the camera uh well with all that said we have so much to show we have new projects we have things in progress we have new yarn so we're just gonna get into it right yeah it's been a few weeks since we've seen you i think it was last in in november i believe yeah, I think yeah so late it's november been, it's yeah it's been a while and um so we've sort of got to get our podcasting hats back on and get back into the swing of things but um it just means that there's all the more stuff to share with you. Well, why don't we start with what you're wearing? Yes, absolutely. This is one of my favorite finished objects in I don't know how long. And I've worn it. It almost hasn't been off my body <laughs> <It's true. laughs> um, since I, I cast it off. It is the Azicena sweater from Nadia Quetan Le Chien. And it is in the Worsted book um, from La Bien Aimée. So it pulls together a whole bunch of lovely designers. If you haven't seen it yet, it's really worth checking out. Although I say that and we're out of stock because people yeah, love it. But it's we will get book. more. <laughs> we will get more. We're on the list. Et une version française arrivera sous peu. So um, it's, it's a great time to look out for that book. And don't worry if you can't find it, it's coming up. Um, but all that to say, this is a, a fantastic pattern. I know I'm a little far away, so I'm going to come a bit closer to show the color work because it's quite nice and delicate. So it is your basic top-down yoke, but it's got some really thoughtful details. The short rows are below the color work, which means that the back of the neck is raised really comfortably, but the color work itself matches the rib all the way around. So you don't get that little gap at the back of, uh, of extra main color before the color work. And um, it has this sort of, just like, it feels like I'm wearing a gorgeous fancy necklace. Yeah, like it totally. feels like fancy jewelry, but it's just cozy. It's it's delicate at the same time it's graphic yeah i don't know what more to say that it felt like the yoke flew off the needles i i loved it but did you modify it at all because it's such a slim fit i did and i have to say i worked on this more as a personal project than a store sample when we're knitting samples for the store we're very careful about gauge and taking note of our modifications because we know that they serve as really useful um uh sort of experience and guidelines for anyone else wishing to do that pattern I wasn't quite so precise with this one and I believe I haven't measured it off the top <laughs> of my head but I do think my row gauge might be uh denser as one person commented on Instagram it does seem like the yoke is shallower on me but I also picked and I don't even remember what size I knit but I picked one with not very much positive ease here it fits really well on my shoulders that's also down to the good shaping and grading of the of the in of the increases through the yoke. Um, I accidentally left out one row of the color work. Oh, one row, come on. That won't make much of a difference, but it, it slightly changes the visual, but I was past the sleeve split and I left it be. Um, so I didn't modify the yoke in that I didn't leave out any rows. I didn't leave out any increases for my size, but I picked a size with very little positive ease, which we're not really used to these days. No, I know, but it's such a nice, it's a refreshing mm. fit. Like, it's a it's mm -hmm. a different looking fit, and I really, really like it. I think it goes well with the style of this yoke and that it lends a sort of, not sort of, very definite vintage um, 40s fit to it with the little sort of close-fitting yeah, sweaters yeah. that I think um, just is, is a really refreshing look. And um, I did modify the decreases through the body. I added decreases and I believe the original didn't have any shaping through the body I added decreases about I think every I could count them 10 or so t every like 10. couple inches every 10 rows or so 
um, three times, I think, and um, left it really quite cropped. Part of that was impatience, part of that was because I have <laughs> lots of high-waisted jeans and I felt like something that I wouldn't have to always tuck in. And I picked up the same number of stitches around the arms, but I did increase quite regularly through the arms as well. Decrease. Decrease. <laughs> Although a flare would be really sassy, like a flared sleeve if you increase. Maybe with a different okay. fit. Yeah. Maybe with a different fit. We'll work on that for yeah. a future design. Um, so that's that. I do find with top-down sweaters in general, there's so much room for customization and making the fit your own, whether you add waist shaping decreases, whether you pick up extra stitches under the arm for a bit more room, whether you pick up fewer stitches for a more fitted look. Um, and once you've got your stitches picked up for the sleeve, it's kind of yeah. fair play what you do. This on is your when sleeve. I found out that Naomi basically just improvises her sleeves generally. I like basically just... never follow in. I basically stop looking at a pattern after the sleeve split. And I'm like thinking of all the time that I've spent so much so many hours working oh, out the sorry. sleeve decreases on my patterns being like, is anyone even reading these? But I think that this might no. be just you. <laughs> I think it really I might. don't think this is And normal. I don't necessarily condone it, but I mean it as this is the joy of making our own garments. We can make them to fit ourselves and we can learn about what we want to wear, what our bodies feel comfortable in, what makes us feel amazing and all this hard work that we've put into these garments that we just want to go off and be amazing in. Yeah, and wear um, every single and day. And wear all the time. And this is the La Bien Aimee Cory Worsted, but it mixed with... It is the Sunday Morning DK from Sonder Yanko, and this color is cover to cover. It's the most beautiful, rich navy. I ended up using leftovers of Cory from another project, and I only used, well, evidently, I'm, I'm, I'm knitting a very sm a small size, but I used maybe 10 grams of each color, and I think all the way up the uh, impressive size range that this pattern has. Uh, it's, it could be a great option to take those really luxury skeins of Cory Worsted and use a bit of them and you'll have enough left for, for a hat, for mittens. Um, color work that uses just a little bit of skeins like this can really take a skein a long way. Well, it looks great. Thank you. Can you tell I love it? I just can't shut up about it. <laughs> <laughs> but we can move along now. I'll okay. be wearing it all night. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I will tell you, I am not wearing a store sample. I did not steam it. I did not glean it. But this is um, the Nightingale sweater by Nora Gawn, and it was the cover sweater of an issue of Pom Pom a couple years ago. Yep. Oh, there's fluff everywhere. Um, and this is like, this is this sits in my closet, and I wear it um, when I want a really comfy hand knit. But I will say, um, I struggle with my gauge a little bit on this. It was big, and so I knit the smallest size and still got a sweater that it feels a little bit bigger than I would have liked. Like, I would like a fit like what you have. Um, and the other thing I noticed about it is that, like, the um, the space on the shoulder is just too... It's not what I wanted. Like, it's a little droopy. I really wanted it up here. And I think if it had those elements, I would wear it, like, all, all, all mm -hmm. the time because mm -hmm. I'm so proud of all the hard work that I did. And Nora's beautiful cabled work is always it's incredible. absolutely beautiful. Like, the definition is so crisp. And it's really just sort of a cut above. Like, it's a little bit... Extra. It's a it, well, you know, I love a little bit yes. extra. Uh, I did make one modification to this. Uh, if anyone out there is knitting it, is that um, in the original chart, the this cable continues up into the neck, and I did keep that in the back. I don't know if you can see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But in the front, I decided that just for this, to make a much prettier neckline to kind of let that yeah. cable go. So it's one of those things where, like, I wish that I was smart enough to tackle it again and redesign, especially this this shoulder section mm -hmm. here, so that it would sit up. You know, Tan France would be so upset if you saw this. <laughs> like, that's not where your shoulder is. But anyway, it is still a sweater that I adore. It's incredibly comfortable, and I'm very, very proud and of the hard the work that went into it. And do you remember the yarn that you used for it? Uh, I don't. It's some kind of worsted <laughs> yarn. It's worsted weight. Absolutely. Yeah. It looks like you could take any classic... Worsted weight, Gilead. Um, oh, Rowan. Gilead would be amazing. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking is Homestead would mm. work for this really oh, yeah, well. I think it would be great. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I did say that my gauge was big, so maybe that's yeah. maybe that's a bit heavy. Um, you know, shelter would also be a really mm -hmm. beautiful choice. So and, uh, if you want a challenge, you've got the note. So in a sweater that's like this, where literally the entire 
front of it is a chart. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, wow. making those kind of modifications, you really need to know what you're getting yourself in for and that, you know, at every step you're going to have to really think is how is this going to affect something else because mm -hmm. it is, you know, a knit flat and seamed and there's a puff. So, yeah, I'm fine with it the way it is. It I, I like it enough to wear it on the podcast. So there and you go. I never notice until you mention it, the shoulders. You know, these are things that you notice yes. when you're wearing it because you feel it more maybe. I think I'm also just always aware of, because I'm always thinking as a designer about what I'm trying to achieve and what I, especially we talk a lot about ease versus fit. Mm -hmm. And this is a classic mm -hmm. sort of thing that when people ask me, well, how do I know if something's oversized and fitting me properly versus too big? This is one that's really a dead giveaway, is that if this shoulder seam, especially on a set-in sleeve, is hitting below this bone, where it, like mm -hmm. sort of where you join, that's a sign that something's too big for you. So right. you can wear something absolutely with 20 inches of ease, but you know, especially if it's a set-in sleeve, it should still hit you here. Mm -hmm. So that's where, I think that's why I think about it a lot, because right. it's, it's something I've talked about in classes and stuff. Cool. So there you go, that's what I'm wearing. That's what you're wearing. Let's What's next, Master of Ceremonies? Uh, well, let me consult my <laughs> handy maker's board, which I shall be talking about later. This is one of our newly restocked products that's been a very hot seller. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to it, but I find it absolutely essential for just, like, my, my documents. Um, <laughs> you said that <laughs> like you're an ad fan. My documents. <laughs> my goal... <laughs> Since I was about four, maybe. No, I would have been older than that. My mum wouldn't let me watch Ab Fab when I was four. But I always wanted to be sappy. I don't know if that's your take that's takeaway adorable. you're supposed to get from Ab Fab. <laughs> I think so, but that's very, but very adorable. I loved her. Um, so, new yarns and samples. Okay. You know what's first? Is it the Baccarat Bank? Yes. Okay. Um, should we do a snap and I'll get changed into my... My brand I love new a good design. Snap. Okay, here we go. Hey, so there hey. you go. Hey. hey, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> so this is my um, latest design. Although it's this actually like a it's a rework of an older design. So this is called the Baccarat Bank sweater because the original was called the Baccarat, and um, apparently, in the game of Baccarat, there's a version called Baccarat Bank where you have more options. And I was like, well, that's perfect because this has genius. more that's options. That's exactly what you need. So my original design of this had uh, four colors in it, a main color and three colors in the yoke, but I decided to go crazy and do an eight color version in our latest new yarn, new to us, uh, Camarose Lama Tweed, which is a beautiful uh, tweedy, flecked, gorgeous yarn in these sort of quite kind of chill colors. Like they, they have a little bit of gray undertone to them. And the palette is just so cohesive and smart together to the point where like I barely even looked at the colors I chose I just mm -hmm. grabbed colors as they came in literally out of the box as we arrived as it arrived and they all work together it yeah. was just seamless and I'm seeing so much consistency in in the tonality of these colors like mm -hmm. sometimes when you find colors that are too close in the same tonal range they might be red and blue but you still don't, don't see the contrast in them in color work but these really still pop against each other. Why? Yeah, I would bet that if we did this, yeah. if we did the old black and white trick, it would fail. I mm -hmm. don't think that it's there is enough difference in the um, contrast mm -hmm. for a true color work. But this is worsted weight color work, and it's a quite a blocky sort of chart. And mm -hmm. by design, the idea is that it's fun to knit, it's fast to knit, it's easy to remember. Nothing is like fiddly or complicated about it. And I was definitely going for that very sort of seventies, eighties. You know, I'm thinking Charlie's Angels at the Ski Hill kind of vibe. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, and it's one of my favorite necklines, too. There's no short rows in this. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really the same front and back, although mm -hmm. I have the center back is where your color work changes. Um, and it's just high enough that you kind of don't need that. It's, mm -hmm. it's There's plenty of, of coverage in the back without it sort of, um, you know, being weird. And because yeah. this is quite a, a flowy yarn, it's got a little bit of viscose in it. It's got a silkier feel to it. Um, you know, it's got a lot of drape to it. Yeah. yeah, and with, with the alpaca or, or llama fiber in there, too, it's just got a bit more weight to it than mm -hmm. a wool would. So you, you do have a little bit of that turtleneck with no short rows. You get a little bit of fabric here, but the yeah. rib is deep enough, and the fabric's heavy enough. Yeah, that, that it pulls it, it down. It pulls it down, and it's not going to be hiccuping at, at your collarbone. Yeah. Now, we have some... We, we put together all of the colors that you need for the color work. 
Um, yeah, into and the kit. I'm going to go get those. Oh, okay. You do that. While you do that, I'm going to talk. Um, so, yeah, we put the color work together as a kit, but we didn't include the main color because this often happens with sweater kits. The amounts you need are quite variable by size, so we just advise you to pick a main color. It doesn't even have to be the one I use, which is called granite, um, and figure out how many you want for your size, but then you can get all the colors you need for the yoke in a kit, or go crazy and just have fun with the palette as it, as it is, because I really don't think that you can make a mistake. So, for example, here are the seven contrasting colors you'd need. We have another kit where the, the last color, the yeah. last this three sides, the upper three sizes will need two balls of the final color. So uh, we packaged that up as well. Um, and then I just bought a ball of the yarn to show you a little poster. Um, these cute little 50 gram formats, fantastic for color work. You're not gonna have unmanageable leftovers at the end. And um, this is just another color that caught my eye as a really fun, bright green that could have easily found a home in, yeah. this, in this scheme. Um, so that is that, the Camarose Llama Tweed, a fantastic company that we love from Denmark. They make the Snuff Nug, which we talk about all the time, and the Midnight Soul that we're obsessed with. Yeah, um, and really this glad is too. definitely a new Kudka from them, and uh, we're just excited to discover a bit more about yeah. different fibers, alpaca, tweed. Yeah, it's yeah. super great. And also, one thing I should say about this, um, coming back and knitting another sample of this sweater, is this is now the third size that I've knit personally. So I did full testing with it, and now this is an M1. I've knit the S1, and the S2, and now this is the M1. And I love all of them. So that's going from two inches of ease at, in the smallest that I've knit for myself, which is definitely like way more like the fit you're wearing. This uh, probably has about an inch to two of ease. Yeah, so it's definitely more possibly. of like a... But then I was like, oh, I'd like to have a bigger one. So I did the S2, and now that I've knit this one, I just, I love it. It's so mm. cozy. And, you know, I think it is also a sweater that looks better in motion mm -hmm. than in photographs. So I was really excited to put it on for the podcast. And I think I'm going to wear it for the rest of the time. Well, you need it. It's a bit chilly here. Yes, it is. So there you go. That's it. Uh, Lama Tweed, Backer Up Bank, free pattern, available now on Ravelry. Or you can email us at the store if you don't want to use Rav. Love it. What's next on my... Check the agenda. We actually have another new yarn in... in the store that we sort of discovered together and we're both really excited about. And it's from a company in the US called Elemental Effects or Affects, it's with an A. And uh, they have Shetland sheep. So they're Shetland sheep, but they live in the States. They're like, <laughs> I guess, the best of both worlds. And um, they have this beautiful Shetland fingering. It's an incredible palette. And they come in these lovely little 28 gram uh, skeins. It's just but, so uh, vibrant. Yeah. Like all and of the shades. It, and each, color has a number of shades in it so which mm -hmm. is ideal for doing beautiful traditional uh, color work the kind of thing you might see from marie wallen mm -hmm. or, or even k facet as mm -hmm. well just Absolutely. an incredible range of colors and this pile that i'm holding is maybe a future just design. a taste but uh, really but let's together. let's look at your whip because i think it shows it so beautifully so this is the hello from my colors crop by jesse made designs and i'm just loving it it feels like um, just just the rhythm that I'm building with with knitting these color work bands is just so it, it's it's meditative, but I'm focused. I I switch off to everything else. I maybe have an audiobook going. It does need focus, but in a really good way, in a way that's really brought me back in touch with the knitting process, slowing it down a little bit, um, focusing on on my evenness, focusing on the play of colors and what to do next. So I do find that it's a, it's been a gorgeous product project for bringing me back to process knitting versus product knitting. Well, and I remember looking over your shoulder when you were looking at the pattern. This one has lots and lots of information about mm -hmm. planning your yoke, planning your colors. Mm -hmm. And I think that's such a nice, a nice thing when a designer can offer that. So yeah. um, we won't show any of the pattern because it does have all this information in it. Uh, but it's definitely a beautiful one to have in your collection because I think you can come back to it over and over again. You can start with a couple of colors if you want to take it easy mm -hmm. and eventually get to something like this. How many colors yeah, are you absolutely. using? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm using um, seven contrast colors and uh, a main, a main color. color. So it's the same. And the... Oh, true. And the pattern itself calls for four contrast colors, I believe. Um, and again, Jessie gives um, advice on how she picked her colors for it and, and the order of them. 
um, which is really helpful if it's the first time you've knit color work. Uh, it's I, I, I found it, it coming at it as if I were a new color work knitter or fairly uh, recently um, interested color work knitter. It would it, I can imagine it would be like a click moment for people for like, oh, that's how I can order things. Um, similar to the whole uh, black and white trick. Take a picture of your colors that you mentioned earlier. Take mm -hmm. a picture through your phone with the black and white filter on and see if you can still see a difference between all the shades. Having said that, I know that some of the colors in my color work, they're very close to the main color. So I'm definitely calculating each, um, each band of color work, it, bearing in mind that, that my contrasting pop colors, like this rust and this green, um, they need to be quite prominent alongside some of, I've, I've got a pale blue in this first band, for example, that you can't really see, but I think will come out yeah. in the overall effect. And it's wild actually sitting here with the real thing here and then being able to see the little preview on the phone and just yeah. seeing from a distance what it really looks like. I mean, it's incredible. It's really helpful to me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's okay. This yeah, is how I'm you sure. should always look at your whips. This <laughs> is amazing. Yeah, go on, like, mm -hmm. uh, show someone your whip on FaceTime and you'll mm -hmm. get a whole new... <laughs> yeah, a whole new thing. Um, other video call service providers are available. Um, <laughs> but I'm just having the time of my life with this one. And I'm taking it slow. I cast it on, I want to say before, a, a bit... A fair bit before Christmas. Yeah. And I just sort of work about an inch or, or a, a band here and there when I can really spend the time to get all the way through it and see the effect that it has overall. Um, another brilliant thing about this pattern is how much it encourages you to make it your own. Um, Jessie provides charts so that you can color them in yourself. I've been playing around a bit with the um, stitchfiddle.com, uh, one of the free online chart providers out there. And just looking up other motifs online, um, other sweaters in my collection that inspire me. And for that reason, I won't be publishing the charts. I feel like this is a way to really get creative for yourself without turning it into a yeah, design. Do, yeah, doing what um, someone else has done. It's exactly. really about having fun and playing. And... Yeah, so I followed the instructions exactly all the way through the yoke. I'm knitting the second size. Um, again, not quite sure if I'm on gauge, but... I'm using the needle that I, I know would have would give me a result I like with this yarn, which is, and you can see in this light, 3.75. So it's a labor of love. It's going to be, you know, all over color work on 3.75 millimeter so, needles. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. Will you yes. at least follow a chart for these sleeves, or are you going to improvise those? <laughs> I think I'm going to have to follow something for these sleeves because obviously the decreases will change the. Um, the color work yeah, placement, yeah. the stitch count, and um, that, you know, you want, when you're following all over color work, you, you want some things to line up, um, and I don't want some of the motifs to be offset against each other. So while this is a crop, which I love, I'll probably knit it as a crop, it's a t-shirt in the original pattern. Now, I love the versions I've seen with long sleeves. I will probably do long sleeves. Jessie provides some guidelines for long sleeves, but as balloon sleeves. Ooh. So basically, you don't have to worry about any stitch count changing because you just work the sleeves straight, and as far as I can tell. Because you know me, I haven't read the sleeve instructions <laughs> yet. Um, so, speaking of coming at these yarns as a beginner, mm -hmm. um, also before Christmas, this when we first got the yarn in, like we, we both went home with a big pile of it, and what I really wanted to do was write a couple of patterns for people who don't have any color work experience at all to kind of prove that like you can use these yarns and not be into color work. Mm -hmm. So um, they, they've been published on Ravelry for a bit and we've had kits and they've sold out and then they've come back in. Um, but I thought I'd, I'd give them a quick demo here for our podcast folks who may not have seen them. So this is like the simplest of little striped beanies um, and it actually uses, I'm going to get nice and close so you can really see it. I've got two shades of each color in the stripes. So there's actually uh, five colors in this hat. Um, so you can get some of that. What happens with these yarns, these colors, it's like they glow. When you put them together, and they can get this glowy effect. So I wanted to do that even though it wasn't color work. I mean, stripes is color work mm -hmm. in its own way. So this one's nice and big, a little bit oversized, a little bit slouchy for that sort of, you know, indie rock look. Um, so that's, that's called the Elemental. And then I did a second one 
called the nostrand, which if you think about it, <laughs> means no strand. So here we also have color work, but this is all slip stitches. And so what I wanted to do was take something that you might see in one of these beautiful feral designs um, with, again, that glow factor where the yarn shifts color. Yeah, specifically, like, I, I don't want to yep. block the light, but I'm pointing now because you can really see there's sort of just a new dimension that comes into it when you have two yarns that are so close in shade together, but there's this sort of colder greeny yellow and then this warmer gold yellow. And even from here, you can see how it's not one color, but it's not really obviously delineated yeah. either. It so just brings such zoom. a, like, a, it's like it's radiating a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, so this one yeah. fits a little uh, a little slimmer and has a more traditional sort of uh, mm -hmm. beanie style uh, without the slouch and has a different construction. Just keep it interesting, mm -hmm. you know? But the whole thing is done without ever carrying more than one yarn. You just slip your stitches and then... So if you can do that, if you can slip purl-wise with the yarn in back, you can do this. So we have one kit that's for both of the... Like for either, I should say. Not for, there's not enough to do both hats. Mm -hmm. There's enough to do one or the other. And you get both patterns with the kit. But you get both yeah. patterns with the kit. So that I'm really proud of these. I think they're super fun. And I like that idea of being able to use you know, what I've learned as a designer to offer something a way in. Like, mm -hmm. you know, because I want mm -hmm. someone to be able to knit this uh, Hello from My Colors or this or this. Yeah. And to anyone who's feeling like, I don't know how I'm going to get there this is how you get there. And yeah. I want to write those patterns so yeah. that people can awesome. can move on with their skill set. So that just sort of just brings to the fore what we were talking about, color work. And when we say color work, we don't mean that as a catch-all term. What, what we were talking about is stranded color work, technically, yeah. in that you're carrying two yarns, well, in both of these patterns and in Hello From My Colors, you're only carrying two at a time throughout every round. Um, and there are various ways of managing that. I use both my fingers. Um, I hold both yarns in my left hand. Yeah. And that is stranded color work, which is uh, traditionally used for things like Fair Isle knitting, yeah. um, Scandinavian knitting, and basically anything where you use two colors in the same round. But that's not the only way of knitting color work, as in playing with two colors. Like you say, stripes is, totally stripes color, work. is color work. And um, mosaic knitting and slip stitches can also be color work. Yeah. So yeah, so don't um, if you're intimidated at all by the idea of stranding or fair isle um, or becoming a color work knitter, there's a million ways in. And frankly, I find mosaic pretty intimidating. We have a customer mm -hmm. who like dove in with a mosaic project, and it really reminded me that like I need to get on this. That it's like I don't, I need to know more about this so that I can help our customers when they're yeah. engaging it. Yeah. So maybe next podcast I'll have a mosaic project going. Totally. And yeah. then stranded projects like that are really fun if you don't even really care about stranded knitting and it doesn't seem like something that appeals to you as a new technique and you don't want to be bothered with it but there's the kind of effect you can get just with slipping stitches and merrily knitting on and yeah. you're all good yeah so, absolutely yeah okay so um that's sort of our elemental effects section mm -hmm. which i'm really i'm really excited i'm gonna probably have a vest in that too like <laughs> we you will hear more about this yarn you are from us for sure in this yarn. yeah i'm really into it um did 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 you get that? I don't think she got that. What? It's like invested. you're invested in this yarn. Oh, God, <laughs> Naomi! <laughs> you should have to put it five cents in a swear jar for that. I have invested in this. Invested. Oh, terrible. In making this yarn popular. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this next on our agenda? Let's make it next. Yes, let's okay. make it next. So, um, another new yarn we're really excited about. It, it's a totally limited edition. Um, series from Annie Perrin, who is a dyer here in Montreal that we adore, who happens to be really into Taylor Swift, uh, just like we are. Just like we are. Uh, and so she has uh, brought us some yarns that are inspired by Taylor Swift album, but I do want to say up front, like, you don't have to be a Swifty to get into these yarns, as you'll soon see. So um, she's done this on her Hampton base, which is an MCN, so merino, cashmere, nylon. It's fingering, and it's beautifully dyed in 15 colors here some. yeah get a whole pile of these and so each colorway is named for one of the tracks on evermore which is taylor swift's most recent record which is quite a moody uh moody album there's some pop on there uh most recent original release because yeah sorry i mean red is a re-release you're right you're right sense. um i should say <laughs> that is correct um so this so you can see there's some like quite dark and moody tones 
uh, in this. Ooh, you got the dark and stormy. Yeah. I got the the bright, bright and, and peppy. I love it. Yeah, because there's some pop there too. Absolutely. But it's basically, like there's there's just a beautiful balance mm -hmm. in this collection of jewel tones of uh, quite dark neutral dark colors, neutrals, some speckles, some very pretty speckles. This one's my favorite. It's called Long Story Short. Just got that grayish have... blue underneath with some beautiful rust and purple. Just gorgeous. And I have champagne problems here, which is, uh, I have no problem with mm -hmm. this yarn. Yeah. And I do want to raise a glass of champagne to it because it's beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And oh, this is amazing too, this incredibly dark purple it's called marjorie it's like a purple burgundy wine color i love color. those brown undertones that come into mm -hmm. purple so that's when i really connect with purple together with that mm. which is this one's uh cowboy like me which has got that leather color in it so i totally yes. get i like get the brass i get the name of like yeah um i don't know like the boots, hardware yeah boots. totally so uh these are all online now so you can have a look at the colors like i said there's 15 of them and these colors I think we were talking about would be incredible in in a beautiful shawl that mm -hmm. takes advantage of more um, contrast. So yeah. you know what we were talking about is like a Stephen West style thing would yeah. be perfect because you really be able to put some Get colors these pops together. Going and like Steph's been talking about all these moody the moody neutrals and I've got this armful of the they really come across as primary colors, but there's just so much maturity in the yeah, the depth. tonality of them. There's so much depth to them um, that. You know, this is this is a color I think that really hooked us on yes. this in the first place. Um, Tis the damn season. It's just the most perfect Christmassy, but not too Christmassy red. Yeah. And it's just got enough orange and enough glow and enough unexpected, almost neon in it mm -hmm. that you're not thinking fire engine. You're not thinking strawberry. I don't know. There's just a lot. Can we just put it together Going with on. this beautiful gray? You know what I see it with actually? I just oh, really yeah, love yeah, it with that gorgeous. blue. Yeah. And sometimes I find that that primary colors together, it can look a bit too rainbow, a bit too cartoony. Sometimes that's what you want, but it can be all that in this palette while still being like, sometimes I say, I describe things as mature to customers and they shy away like they're, like that's yeah, a bad word. Matronly. And I don't mean matronly. I, it's, yeah, exactly. Elegant, or there's just like some extra oomph behind it. Yeah, and that's why we really like Annie's work. We always find that her colors are very thoughtful. Um, they're obvious. It, the, the tie to her inspiration, she does a lot of pop culture inspired series, is so clear. Um, but she always brings something to it that I wasn't expecting. Like she just did a whole series on Encanto, which is mm -hmm. like a kid's animated movie, which was great. But like, what she did with her interpretations got a lot of a lot of sophistication to it, and we feel really lucky because this is totally exclusive to us. Which I, yes. I mean, for now, she's certainly welcome yes. to die it again. But I, for and now, I think she might sell. She died a little bit more. She might sell some herself. We're not not sure about that, but the important part is, is we, we have, have a it. lot of it. <laughs> We're excited yeah. about that. Um, and so, oof, I hope you love it too. And I think this is, will be the only time. We get so, it. Yeah, we, one of the reasons I mentioned Stephen West is that he has a new book coming out called Painting mm -hmm. Shawls, which by the time this podcast airs, we should have in store. It's it's en route. And um, the shawls in that, there's 13 shawls in that book, and they are these sort of bold, mm -hmm. contrasting uh, shawls that he's been designing lately. And I think that if that interests you, this is a great yeah. palette to look at. I keep pick, picking this one because it's the most gentle shell pink, and I don't know if that's coming through... Yeah, it's gorgeous. Finally, we have a little bit of light still, even though it's quarter to five. It's exciting. Um, but I don't know how much the natural light is showing you. Oh, there's just so much going on in these colors. It's quite similar to the base of Champagne Problems, I think. Yeah, so there's in our speckles, we've got Champagne Problems, and we've also got oh, Closure. Closer. And the Closure has a pinker undertone oh, from the Champagne side. Problems, has more of a gray. It's like stone, uh, almost yeah, warm stone. Yeah. 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 Gorgeous fade potential totally. in her speckles, too. So, yeah, we are delighted to have it. We're, we're very happy to have Annie's Yarns in the store and really happy that we could kind of come up with a way to do it that's really good for her business and really good for us, too, where she's she's a nurse. She's super busy, so she dies when she can. Um, and anyway, yeah, we're just delighted. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's online. Go have a look. And, yeah. Yeah, is it almost time for whips? 
Well, let me check the schedule. Yeah, check the schedule. Okay, you check the schedule and I'll check the yarn. I don't know if this will become a regular podcast feature, checking the schedule. It's more just because <laughs> I didn't memorize the schedule this time. Um, ooh, do you want to talk about octave or soft core? Oh, let's do both. Do you want to snap okay. and both put them on? Oh, yeah, good okay. idea. Okay, we're going to do a snap. One, two, three. Okay. Oh, we're so fuzzy. We're so cozy. Imagine uh, if we hugged right now, it would be the coziest hug. Oh, I'll hug. Let's do that later. Okay. okay. We'll hug later. Um, I've been talking a lot. You go. So, um, this sweater is, uh, you may have seen it a couple times on Instagram because I actually <laughs> find it really photogenic. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's basically your new favorite sweatshirt is how I described it and it's how I feel when I'm wearing it. I've been getting really into um, loungewear through the pandemic. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that and sounds, everybody else. <laughs> that sounds like a flat thing to say, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of meaning behind it. I, I feel like I've let myself embrace the fact that I want to be comfortable. Um, it's been a real sort of style revelation to me to invest in quality loungewear. And part of that is finding some really cool locally made sweatpants companies. And part of that has been knitting the coziest ever sweatshirt. Which you haven't named yet. Yes, I have. I mean, you haven't said it out loud. Oh, I haven't said it out loud and told you. This is called the Softcore Sweater. Which is amazing. It's so, such a good name. It's like, you're not softcore unless you lift softcore. Um, so this is, it's a top down raglan, what more can I say, but um, it has slightly, uh, like a higher increase rate through the first couple inches, and um, that's graded up proportionately in the sizing, so the, the first uh, couple inches or sort of a little bit deeper on your collarbone is a, is a faster increase rate, and then it drops off to be increasing differently in the sleeves and the body. Yeah, it's got great proportions. Yeah. Oh, thanks. And this is in the Drops Air, which is one of our favorite fuzzy yarns. Oh, also because of, it looks like I might have decreased through the body, no, but just, I didn't. That's your, it's, that's your rib is nice and tight. Yeah. Um, nice tight twisted rib. It does have decreases through the sleeves and um, like nice long cozy sleeves. And um, I can't really talk about elevated details because there aren't any. It's just simple. Yeah, it is, but it's, but, but it's fabulous. And it's also, I really like the air at this gauge. Mm. I've knit with it a little bit looser. And what mm -hmm. I like is I'm really seeing how well it's going to hold up. Yes. Now, uh, it's I'm noticing it fuzzing because I have actually worn it quite a bit and I've gleaned it a bit. Um, but that is a property of this type of yarn. So this is the Drops Air, um, which is a firm favorite among all of us. It is a tube with fibers blown into it. So those fibers are quite loose and they're not held in a spin. So it doesn't pill, it doesn't create those little obvious bobbles, but it does get fuzzier with use because those fibers kind of work their way out of the tube. Um, but it's fuzzy to begin with, so yeah, I it, it doesn't it end up looking bad. like you've like overworn or anything. It just gets fuzzier, really. Yeah, yeah. 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 If anything, that's good. Yeah. And so I'm wearing sort of a cousin to that. This is the Octave Sweater, uh, which is a design of mine that was in Knitting Magazine in the Deep Fall issue, so just a few months ago, I guess. Um, and we had a store, a store sample made up in Drops Wish, which is the next sort of one up from Drops Air. It's a slightly heavier weight, and uh, our fabulous Emma uh, made this for us, and then I just added the, uh, the sleeve stripes. So one of the things about this sweater when I designed it is that there's kind of like a, a panel in the sleeve and in the nitty version there's two different panels um, but then I added a few more on my own website so it's linked um, and one of them is these crochet sort of chains that you put into um, like a pearl I love it uh, gutter like a valley or yeah, yeah yeah exactly you leave you do yeah. pearl stitches and then you come back and add in these with a crochet hook and I feel like uh, it's, it's like, like a talk about a sweatshirt this is like an Adidas tracksuit totally it's like the go faster stripes and yeah. I love it and it's just so creative. This like panel here is worked. Yeah, it's worked at, at ninety degrees, so it really gives it an interesting silhouette. Yeah, I like. I really love this because I love the. Um, I love sideways sweaters for all the fun you can do here, but I don't like the necklines. You end up mm. a lot with these sort of boat necklines. Mm -hmm. So my way of dealing with that is do uh, bottom up panels 
just to the shoulders mm -hmm. so that you can do a nice proper neckline. Yeah, that's and a then, good quilt. Yeah, and then you pick up all the way around and knit out on both sides. So you knit in almost every direction with this sweater, but I don't think it's super hard. When yeah. I Well, Emma's little report that she wrote, she's like, it's maybe not a first sweater, but it mm -hmm. could be a second sweater. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. She did such a good job, like so oh, nice yeah. and neat on the it's, neckline. It, yeah, she's great. She's yeah. such a good knitter. It's really tidy. And, and it's, it's uh, nice yeah. and chunky, so even though you're, it's a, it's a, one of the thicker yarns that we have, and so even though you're knitting in different directions, you're picking up stitches, it's sort of, the flow is probably going on there in that it's, it's fast. It's a fast, I mean, yeah. you could knit up the front and back panel easily in a couple in of evenings, evening yeah. or two, and then you're off to the races. And mm -hmm. the nice thing is you don't get that sleeve island thing, because you are actually building the sleeves and the, ha and the sweater at the same time. Yeah. So I find this construction I, that's really motivating. I've used it in a few different things, mm -hmm. some t-shirts and s some lighter weight things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can find it for free in Nitty. We'll obviously link it. And um, and then the you can have fun doing whatever you want with the sleeves, but this is just one option. And you could even do, yeah. if you have like stuff in your um, in your stash, like do four different colors. It doesn't all even have oh, to be the same a color. Good idea. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Yeah. And I mean, even if you did get a ball of wish just for that, you'd have enough leftovers for a headband, Hat, probably yeah, something. Yeah. Both of us chose sort of very classic yeah. sweatshirt style neutrals for this, but I was looking at the colors we have of Wish, and I think a sort of close color pairing for those stripes could be really elegant too. And also check out the pattern for the other sleeve options too. If yeah, this is a, quite yeah, a style. There's a cable, and yeah. there's like a, a dip stitch version. It gives yeah. a very different. It, it's not quite so sweatshirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you're interested in that construction. Um, Check out the other options too. Yeah. And I was thinking of some some brighter options for this as well, because it does feel it's so next to skin soft. It's got this that nice deep armhole. It it does feel like something I could toss on over my sports bra as I'm leaving the gym or something. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I say that. Um. I too go to the gym. <laughs> but just <sighs> say. Yes. I've been doing yoga at home. Well, that's and nice. Put it on yeah, you could wear it over your, over uh, over your yoga, yoga stand. So I was looking at actually somewhere, you know, probably quite far out of my comfort zone for coming into work. But, like, this is why not? Fun. Brighten it up. This, I mean... This is better on you, but cool. this is really fun. Yeah. yeah. It's very flash dance. I like it. Right. Yes, 80s, bright 80s activewear. Yeah. Totally cool. a vibe. I, like I love it. So this, I was sh showing the snap nug. This is... um similar enough to drops there that you can usually switch it out and I think this would be great in snap nug. The main difference is that this has cotton and other uh, non-synthetic all natural fibers and this has um, an acrylic tube to show you side by side. This is the wish so you can see it's a bit chunkier. Yeah I think this Very is a 6.5 millimeter needle mm, for this. Nice. Yeah. And I used a 5 for this I believe. 5.5. By the time you're watching this the pattern should be available. Yeah. Okay, um, check it's the agenda. Still have more new yarns. I've got the Curion. Oh yes, okay. So this isn't new new, but I'm not sure we've talked about it on the podcast. I don't know. Um, Noro Curion, well, it's definitely not a new yarn. It's kind of an iconic yarn. It's been around for a long time. We've loved it for a long time. Long color changing, 100% wool, single ply, worsted weight um, from Japanese yarn manufacturer Noro. Now, these are just a few we picked out as examples of the range of this palette. We mostly picked the bright ones because why do you go for a long color changing yarn if you don't want everyone to know color? it? Yeah. So, but there are some really beautiful soft neutrals in there too. Yeah, this is the Arcade Mittens by, uh, by Mona Schmidt, our very own Mona. And what's so cool here is like it's... It just basically, I love Noro yarns because it's particularly Curion because it does all the work for you. So like I love doing color work and I love taking the time like to design Baccarat to do the kind of work we've been talking about, but I also really love to do no work. And that's what Noro lets you do is it basically, Noro did all the work and chose the colors and put them together and very rarely wrong. Uh, but often unexpected. Yeah. Um, and so this is why I picked this as an example because this is one of, this is color... 343 Akko, and it's one of my favorites for just having the variety that it does inside. It's got blue in there, and then outside is this peach, peach and green and gray, and I think there's even more pink in the very middle, so you don't always know from the outside yeah, what, what you're, you're going to get. Into. On our website, we have 
Noro handily provides little swatches of the long colour change. So we had those side by side. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Uh, I love to use them also. Yeah. Like one of the versions of the Baccarat original Baccarat mm -hmm. sweater, I used Noro to, in the um, in the yoke, just two colors, and just went back and forth between those two yeah. along with the main color, right. and it just does all this work for you. It's yeah. so beautiful, and yeah, so this is a I, great example. I picked this sweater up. Um, obviously, it is not a color changing yarn, but it's the type of yoke that you can look out for if you want to use these long color changing yarns in a yoke. And yokes are a really interesting way to use them because they're quite a large circumference already at the top and they get wider. So the balance and the proportion of the color changes um, shifts through, throughout. So it's really ends up being quite dynamic. And you also, with these long rounds, get a real sense of all the colors in the ball. Those mittens are, are gorgeous, but it's a, kind of a really gradual gradient when you've got basically an eight inch round. Yeah, this is like 10, what 10, is it, 10 yards, yards or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and this is Knit in Shelter. This is the Fern and Feather by Jennifer Steingast. It's a classic. This would also pair well with basically most classic woolly worsteds out there from Rowan Pure Wool Worsted to Gilead to Woolstock. Woolstock might yeah. be a bit light, but it's, it's... You basically can't go wrong. You can't really go wrong. Because it's the standout yarn, if you're using it in colour work, it doesn't really matter if it is a different texture from your main colour because the whole thing is for it to stand out. So it's a great thing to pair with, with something from your stash. And if you're someone who tried Curion a long time ago, I think it's definitely worth reconsidering that you, if you want to try and come back to it. It is definitely softer than it used to be. Mm. Um, it, it had a reputation for being a bit scritchy scratchy and it was okay. used a lot for felting projects. Um, and so... I know some people really were resistant to it, but I have to say, like, this feels super soft to me, and I do. I notice that it's softer than I remember it being. Mm -hmm. And um, John, who who works with us, who's one of the reps who helps us get this yarn, mentioned that they have been making improvements right, and changes right. to the way that they spin the yarn. So I find it noticeable. Um, so if that turns you off, you know, hey, it might still, but if you have the chance to come and feel it. Uh, or yeah. then I think it's worth having a look at it. And, and we mentioned Shelter and Gilead. Those are both quite widely available by now, um, rustic unprocessed yarns. It's similar, it's comparable in softness to those. Yeah. So if you, and, and again, um, you could use it for accessories or sweaters that don't sit next to your skin, but if you can tolerate wool in general, this is absolutely a great choice. It is a soft, yeah, as any soft thing. untreated yeah. wool. Yeah. Um, I did grab a ball of this just to show another example of this is even softer. Yeah. I, I hesitate simply because unfortunately we haven't got all the colors we'd like to have of this gorgeous yarn, but it is a really good match for Kurion. This is called the Hao Nui, and it is 100% wool, and I believe it's sourced from New Zealand. Yeah, so this is a really interesting yarn from Noro because it doesn't have any color changes in it, and in fact it doesn't have any dyed colors. So there's mm -hmm. only five or six colors, I think, in the entire palette, mm -hmm. but they're all natural shades. And we were really excited to get that in for exactly that reason, the idea of pairing it. I mean, look at this mm -hmm. together, yeah. what you might be able to do with like just some subtle texture, like mm -hmm. talk about doing some slip stitch work. Absolutely. Oof, that would be beautiful. Yeah. But I agree with you, like we weren't sure if we should feature it when we only have this one color and yet, you know, we're expecting the rest of it soon and obviously we'll announce that on Instagram mm -hmm. when we get it. But in the meantime, we do have this, and the, these are these huge balls that uh, Nora started doing, so I you know, only need fantastic. a couple to do a sweater. 400 meters, so you'd need two to three for a sweater in, in worsted weight. Um, and, but I think one and then a few balls of this for a scarf, would be yeah. fantastic. Uh -huh. It'd be really cool. So, um, both yeah. of those linked below. Yeah. Discover Nora. New yarns. Yeah, let's do more okay, new yarns. more new yarns. So, I have this gorgeous, beautiful uh, basket. This is, I was just looking around the store like, how can I arrange everything for the podcast? And I grabbed these thread and maple. This is the carryall that we still have a couple of from them. And it's just, it's holding so much. I love it. Um, yeah, and it's so elegant. So it's elegant. so much nicer than a giant pile on your couch. <laughs> or like a big milk crate or something. Yes. <laughs> so, I'm going to put this on just to give you an idea what I'm going to talk about. Okay. This oh, is the cute. Owen hat from Jill Zielinski. Oh, say her name again, I think, to the I know, camera. I mumbled that a bit yeah. into my shoulder, didn't I? Yeah. This is the Owen hat by Jill Zielinski on Ravelry, linked below. Really cozy, classic GK weight. This is just the, the, the color work episode, eh? I guess so. Guess so. 
I'm wearing this because it's a great pattern to match with a couple of our new yarns or freshly restocked again with these tricky supply issues. There are a couple of yarns we wanted to bring in, but we sort of had to soft launch them because of... Yeah, we would order every quantities. color and get like six of them. But we are now well stocked with both Sans Niskan Double Sunday, which is a non... It's not superwash treated, but it is machine washable. Mona is very precise about yes. that being explained. And it's, it's true, it matters because um, while I wouldn't go into the science and the details about how it's machine washable without being superwash treated, it does have a more, what you may call natural feel to it um, than some other superwash treated walls that can sometimes, they can be a bit shinier. And um, it, it, it really does have the handle of, of a woolly wool, but it's a lovely soft. Um, See, it's funny you say that because I feel like it, it's sort of the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. I do feel like it's noticeably sort of more super washy or softer than some of the, like, the, the Gilead or the Shelter. Oh, like, definitely. It's a completely different vibe. But it's also... You're right. It's not, sli it's not slippery yeah. the way that a real treated yarn is. But I think if you're yeah. someone who is sort of stepping a toe away from Superwash but wants to try something, this is a really nice place to go. So this is a 100% Merino wool, and it does feel very different from, say, Gilead, yeah. which is also 100% Merino, um, but, but more minimally processed. So... All that to say, um, I think it would be fantastic for kids also. Yeah. yeah. Really easy care. And also just, um, it would be great for anything around your ears, anything around your neck, if you're sensitive to that. Um, it's, yeah, it's lovely and, and, and it's a lovely palette, lovely um, and yeah, soft this, colors. Some of the uh, colors in this have, uh, were put together with Petit Knit, because mm -hmm. she's a big fan of this yarn. Yeah. and uses it a lot. So uh, if you love that sort of Scandi cool vibe, there's definitely a nice palette there for you. Yeah. Oh yeah, you have a whip. I'm actually knitting this at the moment. Now, here I'm doing half a magic loop because I couldn't find my 16 inch circular. So I just have the cable coming out at one point. But I'm holding it here with uh, Amelia Philomen Mohair, Leona in a pattern that Mona is working on. So hopefully we'll have that updated by the time you're watching this. And I just find that the two palettes just really resonate well with each other. This is the color Tiffany alongside the color, doesn't have a name, but 4081. It Boys, is amazing that it looks like it was designed to go together. I know. Um, this is, if you look at it straight, it is very much, you'd call it a brown, like a chocolatey brown. But bringing in the, somehow it just does really re go well with this, the purple wine tones of Tiffany, which I think, classic me, pick a color that sells out by the time I tell you about how good it is. But these two palettes go really well together and I picked it out for that. Um, for example, we've got 2543 and we've got Brooklyn. Now... On camera, this is looking more yellow mustard, but it does really have a depth of, of yeah, it's more orange to it. It's more, it's got more cinnamon in it, mm -hmm. uh, it, it in person. Good, good. That's a good way of describing it. And then I have... Here, do you want me to take things from you as you go? Sure. Go. Well, I'll put my whip away so I don't fall off my needles. Um, see, I'm getting confused because I also have the alpaca to show you, and that's in this basket too. Did I say how much this can hold? <laughs> This one must go with that. Well, it does, but I also wanted to show how, again, we've talked about matching most hairs and how you can play with, with tone. And this is a very close match, these two. This is um, Janet in the Leona, and this is color 3521. Um, but if I were to start with this color and pick a mohair, I think I'd also go for this one. Um, at the same time, I also have camellia here that would give a very much more neutral but still very yeah, matching tone gray it down. to this pink and gray it down so you've got here a mohair that could either tone down a stronger color or liven up a paler one and then similarly you could either like yeah liven this up or tone it down so there's lots to to play with there um between your Oh, that's nice too. It's nice too, right? Eh? Yeah. 
So this does have more pinky lilac in it, but it totally goes with the true beige to sort of just bring a bit more dimension into it. So I also picked this one to go with the pale pink. Oh. Well, that's Again. nice. Oh, wow, that's wild. The way it pulls yeah. the peach out of it, which yeah. I did not think was there. That's great. So it's really worth, um, and, and I realize this is the sort of thing that is easier when you get into a yarn store, but it's also worth, you know, playing around with little copy paste pictures on your screen, drag them around, yeah. it's, a, it's a backup, and play with your leftovers too, and, and just sort of start to see what pairings can kind of pull different tones out, out of, of your yarns. similar colors. Yeah, absolutely. So all that to say, really, here's another really classic. The, the double Sunday palette and the Emilia and Philomen palette, they're like gorgeous matches. But also right? anything with about a worsted gauge calling for a DK weight and a uh, mohair or surrey stranding. Take a look at the Leona and Clemence matches for double Sunday. And we'll link all those together in the same place down below. Cool. All right, pass those on. Next, we Wait, have... Those are still double Sunday too. See, oh. the, such good neutrals. Such good range. And then the other yarn that we got in from Sun the Scarn that we were waiting for colors and waiting for a restock is the alpaca, which is a 100% alpaca, which people often ask for and we haven't had anything really Oops, for a while. So this is also a DK, although I'd say it's a little that's tiny really bit effective. lighter than the Double Sunday. And this is just an incredibly beautiful soft yarn it has that beautiful alpaca drape, so it's great for accessories, great for sweaters, but I especially love the idea of this for shawls. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to take this hat off because I'm warming up. Um, I love it for shawls because it does have that heavy drape, but Mona always talks about alpaca being slimy, and this is not No, I'm the slimy. one who says it's you slimy. You say it's slimy? Yeah, she's now asks every time we get an alpaca, she's like, it's so stuffy, is it slimy? Like, it's medium slime. <laughs> This is no, no this slime. This is zero slime. Yeah, zero slime. I totally just picked out a bunch of random colors. I picked ones out that sort of just called to me. A lot of them have some tones in them that are a little unexpected. There's this gorgeous, again, it's showing up a bit more mustard for you, but it's uh, color 2564. Instead of being a standard sort of that mustard yellow brown that a lot of palettes have, it's got a bit more toffee in it. Yeah. A bit more car but without being a caramel brown, it's definitely that borderline that you don't always see and similarly I love these greens with a bit more yellow in them often the dark greens veer towards more a bit uh, more yeah, blue yeah, undertone yeah, I agree it gives it's me kind of, um, a foresty yeah texture. like a true foresty tone it reminds me of my basically my favorite color of La Bienemue which is the Shire and um, it has that 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 depth going on with a bit of a yellow undertone and then these pinks are kind of unexpected Beautiful. you've got a true baby pink with a bit more strength to it than shell pink yeah. Um, and well, then this that, one I love. It's, just there's like a, yeah, it's got a, a very floral, mm -hmm. sort of Victorian thing going mm -hmm. on too, which I don't know. It's Without like suddenly, being dull. I, yeah, I really like it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just a beautiful yarn, uh, incredibly well priced, fifty grams. So it's great. You're not buying, you know, like we said, not buying yarn you don't need, and uh, it's one we're both looking forward to getting into and and really starting to do some samples and some mm -hmm. design work with now that we can actually access the whole yes. palette. Yes. Which is awesome. Happy so, about that yeah, one. Yeah, that's on our shelves, virtual and otherwise. Okay. So uh, back to uh, back to an FO. Yes, a store sample. This is the Collective Shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And this mm. was knit for us by our fabulous Amalia. I love the play of colors in this one. Like the idea good. of designing a shawl with one skein of a main color and then a bunch of leftovers. Like, this is a perfect manifestation of that. It's, it's fun. It's an interesting asymmetric structure it's wearable and you can just play with color in such a fun way well and what's really cool is if you are into two color brioche and this is very simple two color brioche um, you can see that what uh, what she's done here is reverse sort of out which one is the dominant color in these um in the chevrons so you get to see both on the same side which i it's think is so cool visible. it is you get to see like what your work is doing like oh why is why am I using this color in this row? Why am I using the other color in this row? Well, and also, like, I always feel like with my brioche hats, I'm always like trying to decide which color to wear, which uh, side goes out. Whereas, like, with something like this, you get to show both sides at the mm -hmm. same time, which I think is such a smart, knitterly way of thinking about how we think about our projects. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a beauty. We used... We used a couple of our current favorites. 
laser fingering simple single ply um, wool and silk blend from Julie Asselin. This is a color we use as our main. This is Orion, um, but she's the one behind us, Julie. Um, yeah, all this beautiful yeah. stuff. Oh, I've got a little bit of Amelia filament, but yeah. above me is Julie, behind Steph is Julie. Gorgeous color range. Um, now, we kind of went similar to what Hohi chose in using a dark main color with bright pops of contrast. Um, and those pops came from the Manos del Uruguay Fino single ply, which is another um, wool and silk blend. And we have these adorable little mini skin kits, which are a perfect match because they give you the, the five colors required. Yeah. And let me get them out of the boxes because super, super cute. Cute little adorable. Yeah, and really and nicely curated little five skein um, packets. So it's, you choose your main color and off you go. Or maybe you have something in your in your stash that you've been waiting yeah. for inspiration to hit. But if you're at all worried about, oh, will colors go together, mini skein sets are a really fun way to maybe look for something curated but unexpected in terms yeah, of Yeah, or maybe the, out of your comfort zone, right? Yeah. So to... Like this one, for example, I really like for its range. Um, I'll just... It, the, the adorable little gift boxes are kind of <laughs> hiding a little bit, but you've got this gorgeous sort of greens and golds and then a bright brick orange and then a shell pink and then two blues. And I wouldn't necessarily put those together picking yarns on a shelf. But it looks great. They're going to really stand out. Yeah, especially in with contrast. A, an amazing like contrast color. You could color. do that. You could even, I mean, I picked out, you could end up going, you know, lighter to have a completely different vibe or you know, pick minis that are sort of a fade almost in themselves and then go really pop in color with the background. So um, there's all sorts of things you can do to play around there with a shawl like this. Um, yeah, I love the minis. And you know, it's sort of like what I was talking about with the Noro where it's like, you know, sometimes I want to do the hard work of all the color choices and sometimes I want someone else to do the work. And this is a case where it's, yeah. it's already done. I just yeah. say, yes, I'll take one of those please. And exactly. you know, I have a beautiful, a beautiful product at the end so yeah I might wear this for the rest of the show it's it's super wearable and yeah. you know it could even be really interesting in one color yeah absolutely. just to get like a bunch of texture in you mean one contrast color one contrast color or even one color the whole way through I've seen versions where they alternate the garter so there's all sorts of yeah. ways you could play with it it's a really versatile pattern that's, our, that's probably our last finished object that we're showing yes. we have a yeah. couple little cute products we want to show and some width so I'll come back to the tool that you've seen me using a couple times so far this episode, the Coconuts Makers Board. We've finally been able to get these back in stock. They flew off the shelves last time that, uh, and they're super popular this time around as well, but we do have a few left. Um, they come in this great little project bag, which yeah, I've already been using mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, so essentially it's a signature washable paper this is the craft paper version there's a lovely gray one which is what Steph picked out mm -hmm. and you think paper not so durable but it really does last it stands the test of time they've used it in a couple other products that we've had in store for coming on a couple years at this point yeah. and they're just as good as ever I'm planning to cover mine with stickers yeah uh, you know when we can like travel and go to events again that's, that's what awesome. I'm gonna do I'm just gonna grab stickers and put you it all over you can get people to sign it you totally could like a cast how fun would that be exactly <laughs> but it lasts longer than a cast <laughs> <laughs> so yeah basically it's got two uh both sides have metal inserts in them that are magnetic so mm -hmm. it comes with an, ar an array of magnets um with it so that you can basically put your charts put your patterns and things like that but then you can also add more magnets there's a magnetic ruler that goes with it uh you know you could be getting your stitch markers on there so there's lots of different ways you can use it but i also really like we showed that it, it can mm -hmm. stand up and become basically um like a like an ipad thing where you yeah basically you can prop, it up so you can prop you can your see. ipad on it too yeah um it and it doesn't really need a hard surface like i have it next to me on the sofa and, and it has its own flap. Yeah. It itself is, you know, it's not going to break or make a big racket or throw all your stuff everywhere if it falls off the couch. Everything's just stuck to it. Um, yeah, mine at home right now has my yeah. charts for a whole bunch of different projects that I'm working on, color work projects. And what's cool is you can use a magnet to uh, or the ruler if you can yeah. get it, which we don't have it right now, but it's coming, uh, to actually mark off where you are yeah. on your chart, which yeah. I re that I really, really like. Yeah. The other thing I was I was able to do was, I mean, I don't know if you necessarily need to do this so much, but, but the magnets are strong enough that they will pin a swatch to your work, oh, that's to cool. the board. 
So you can you can pin it out and stretch it a little bit if you're worried that you know you're there with one hand trying to hold the ruler with the other and count the stitches with your third hand that um you can kind of stretch it out a, li a little bit get those stitches nice and flat um and sort of pin it a bit and measure your gauge with it they come with out of the box it comes with a couple different magnets this is the kind that your stitch markers could stitch to could yeah. stick to right and then it has some flat plastic ones and any any magnet works on it yeah so yeah and i like that it just looks like a basic piece of sort of business wear when it's yeah. shut like yeah. if you just fold it up and put it in your bag it's yeah. not like a glaring thing sort of being like this is for knitting yeah um, I you know I appreciate that I appreciate yeah. that it, it can blend and I do just have a piece of paper for an agenda you know if I were presenting I'd love to give classes again sometime I feel like I could hold this you know what if you're in a choir <laughs> I love now we're just like Coco knits, you need to move into the choir demographic. Choir demographic, please, Coco knits. Um, but legitimately, I've heard people using it for recipes already as well. Yeah. Because yeah, it stands up so nicely. Yeah. If you printed out a recipe from online. And so, you know, sky's the limit. Yeah, what lots you of uses. For. So the last tool we have to, to show with you that's been restocked, we've talked about these a lot in the past because they're fantastic, the TKB cords from the Knitting Barber. These come in a great little tin. And there are three cords in each set to um, 60 inch and 160 inch and 230 inch effectively um, they're great for the, the logic there is is sweater knitting you have one that could be the body and two that could be effectively the sleeves but they're great for putting stitches on holes in all sorts of projects um, here I have them in action Ooh, it's inside out oh that's okay oh of course it is sorry okay I'm just I stare at this so much I know it <laughs> inside mm -hmm. out um, I have them here in the sleeves of my Billy sweater that you may have seen me posting about on Instagram. I'll talk about this a little bit more in the next podcast when I'm closer to being finished. Um, but these have been fantastic for holding the sleeves. They're a hollow tube. So when I came to use them to, to put my um, stitches on hold for the sleeve, you can insert the tip of the tube over the needle tip like that. Hang on. No, nope, wrong way around. There we go. And it's it's really firm. It does grip it. And the stitches really do sit on there. It, it, you do have to sort of move them along. It's less slippery than I expected, which is a good thing. Yeah, because you don't want them sliding off. You don't want them sliding off. And um, you, uh, you really do have a lot of slack there. Um, and I tied a double knot, and it's really staying put well. I don't yeah. need any additional thing to keep it. To keep well, and what's great is then you're really going to be able to try on your sweater mm -hmm. obviously for holding your sleeves is great but I think the third one being there for the body yeah. is the the really good one because yeah. I especially I don't know if you do this but like I'll have it on my cable needle maybe it's 32 right yeah I'm working with I'm like I can get my shoulders through that for <laughs> sure and I just fool myself oh, into thinking that and of course I usually have my um beginning of round in the center back so you know I'll get to the end of the round I need a few stitches past it I'm like yep yeah, gonna get my shoulders through here <laughs> And then um, take it off, and there's all the 45 stitches that I dropped. Yeah. So yeah. this is good. And the other thing I'm thinking of <laughs> doing just with start this, knitting. well, <laughs> it's here, <laughs> and I can't wait to wear it. So the other part I like about having a longer one for the body, um, I will definitely want to try this on to make sure it's it's the right length before I start the rib. But also, um, I'm not too worried about my the yarn that I got this and the quantity the yardage recommended in the pattern but I think what I will do is put all the stitches on the body on hold work both the sleeves to the right length and keep those stitches on hold safe on on that cable so that I can try the whole thing on so that I know how much yarn I have and that, that the body length is right before I commit to the ribbing and um it's super smart yeah, it's... You, you wouldn't risk uh, if you think you might be short on a project, but you think you could get away with a few rows less in the body, it's a great thing to knit the sleeves first to the length that you want, um, yeah. because that's often where you really feel like, oh, I should have gone a little longer, or I could have got away with it a bit shorter. Yeah. In, is, is you feel that more in the sleeves, potentially, than, than the body. So that's your whip as well. That's my whip as well, but I'm, I, I'll tell, like I said, I'll tell more about that next time for show and tell. Um, when I've got a little bit further with it. And I unfortunately can't show you much of my whip because it's actually for a magazine. Okay. So um, it's pretty strict that you're not supposed to show too much. But I feel like like my entire whip is just like stuff that's gonna 
be coming soon. So but this is a cute little project bag. It's a prototype that we're working on. So soon I will have actual versions of it. And then I noticed also that I, I'm knitting on <laughs> my new favorite bamboo interchangeable You're needles. You're not, even, needing, not mm -hmm. even using needles you can talk about. <laughs> I know, even the needles, but we have ordered them and right, they're coming. Yes. And I'll just, I'll just show the, the sneakiest little peek. I'm knitting in this very nice yellow uh, color. It's BioBalance by BC Garn. So it's a bit of a summer knit. That's the wool and cotton blend. Yeah. And um, yeah. really looking, for, I'm really enjoying the project and looking forward to being able to actually tell you about all yes. of these things probably in the next podcast. Yeah. Yay. And that's it. It's exciting. We've got some surprises in store. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, so many cool new things in the store too. And mm -hmm. Uh, you know, new year and we're open again. Yes. New stuff. Full this scheme ahead. Yeah. Um, and we just can't wait to see where 2022 takes us. That's right. Hopefully to the end of my cabled sweater. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time in February. See you next time. Bye. Take care.